What is up everybody, welcome back to the Case Digital. In today's video, we are actually gonna dive in and talk about how you can create a guessing game in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. So guessing games are a great introductory program into Python because not only does it allow you to use some of the things that you've been uh, learning, such as like variables, um, control loops, uh, if statements, and all that stuff, but it also allows you to kind of interact with your computer and see that you're actually allowing or creating something that is causing your computer to do something and return information back and it's just a great all-around um, tool to kind of practice and hone in on those um, beginner level skills and so today the guessing game that we're going to make is actually going to be a number guessing game so basically it's like one of those numbers of like pick a number you know between like one and a hundred and then the user like you will have to guess what the computer has picked and you can make it even more challenging by saying hey you can only you know have 10 guesses or something like that um, but we're going to start off simple and then we'll go on from there so let's hop right in and show you kind of how the basic framework for a guessing game um, would be set up. Okay, so since we're doing a random number guessing game, essentially what we want to do is import a module called random, which this will allow us later on to essentially generate random numbers that the computer or generate a random number that the computer can, you know, grab and then ask us to guess on. And so to do that, you're just going to so import and then random. And then from there, we kind of need to, you know, grab the number that the computer has generated. So I'm just going to say, hey, computer, num is going to be equal to random dot random because I'm only going to do random integers, not floats like 1.5. This is basically going to be something like choose a number between one and 10 or choose a number between, or what number am I thinking that's between one and 10 or what number am I thinking that's between one and a hundred. Um, and essentially to do that, this is all you have to do. And to start off, we'll just do between one and 10. Um, and if you notice, like if you haven't seen one of my previous videos, videos on generating random numbers, essentially when you do this random, it returns a random integer between A and B but it includes both endpoints. So if I say between the numbers zero and 10, you have the options to have zero as a number and 10 as a valid number. Um, and then from that, the basic structure of a guessing game follows under using something like a while loop. Um, if you're not familiar with while loops, while loops essentially are just something that it will continue iterating through that piece of, or that loop of code until a specific condition is met. And for us, we're gonna do something like while, and then the condition that we want to be met is, and we actually probably should set this up up here we'll go um, user guess user input is gonna be equal to none for now right and we're just gonna say while the user input is not equal to the computer num then do something here and in our case we want to actually get the user input because we have we're not getting it here so now we want to start off by getting the user input and then um, either giving hints or do something like that so in our case we're just gonna say the user input is going to be equal to and I'm gonna say input input and then we pass in the input phrase. Now essentially this will be something like guess a number between a zero and ten. Um, now from here if we just run this um, we will essentially get say this this is the basic setup and if we run this um, I can say Python how to make a guessing game and now if I just say this is zero I'm just gonna keep going until it quits so it must be 10, right? Oh, but sometimes you get into an error. And let's talk about why we would be getting something because I've already gone through all the numbers of one through 10. Let's talk about why we could be getting this error. So the reason that we are getting the error, like where I was continually looping through, like I went through all the numbers one through 10, but nothing set, like we never reached this condition of the user input equal the actual computer number. And um, if you're still stuck in that, essentially to get out of it, you just hit Control C um, in the terminal. So click in your terminal, hit Control C, and that'll take you out. But essentially the issue is, is because this input is actually returning a string. So rather than something looking like a number of 10, it's actually coming across and looking something like 10, whereas our computer is generating something as, as that looks like this. And that is, those are not equal because this is an integer, this is a string right here, and this is an actual integer. So to solve that problem, essentially all we have to do is wrap this in an int something like this and if we run this again hopefully if I just start from zero I can eventually work my way where I can meet the condition and if seven there it is so if the actual number was seven and then the computer exited you know exited the program and, and we're left with that now that's great now but that doesn't actually provide a lot of um, value like we don't really know like what's going on we don't I like it was hard to tell hey that actually exited so one thing that you can do is you can say um, after the while loop is exited so it, if it comes down to this line that means it exited out of that while loop or that condition was met and we can say print and said, you did it. 
Um, and then we'll make this an F string and then we'll do something like, I'll pass in the computer number and we'll just say, hey, you did it. Whatever the computer, the random integer that the computer generated was the correct number. Um, now, if we run this again, we essentially get something that looks like, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, look, now we know that that is the correct number. Um, but now what happens if you wanted to make this a little bit more interesting? What if we change this to between one and 100? Now, this is where things could get interesting. You could essentially, you know, either leave it how it is, because this is a perfectly valid guessing game, but you could leave it how it is, um, and then just someone would have to go through and just try and figure it out. Or you can say, you can do kind of like a hot and cold game where you can something say like, um, the user, if the user input is greater than um, the computer number, then we're gonna say, we're gonna print, uh, this is too big. Else if, and this is where, you know, getting that practice with those, you know, those con uh, control statements like if else, um, this is where that really comes in handy because now I can say if user input is less than computer number. And you notice I'm not saying like greater than or equal to or less than or equal to because if it's equal to, we want it to exit the loop and we don't want it to print these out and then exit the loop and say you did it because it would say something like, oh, too big, you did it or too small, you did it. We just want it to exit and say you did it like this is great, you, you, you made, you found the number. Um, and we can say print uh too small so now if i run this here essentially i'm getting like a hot and cold game where it's like i just know that if i get a number between one and a hundred and we probably should change this here um and you know what to make this even like where we only have to really change one thing we can say computer number computer num um, so that way if we ever change say or no that will actually give us the actual answer we if we want to say like a max and a min we could say min value min val is equal to zero max val is equal to 100 and we can pass these in and i can do that same thing here and i can do the max value there that way if i ever change any of this in the future like and i you know maybe i make an input at the beginning of this that asks for the users you know max and min like hey what range do you want to guess between or something like that, or what max value do you want to guess between? And then we don't have to come in here and pro, you know change this string manually, but it, this will change it programmatically. So if I run this, essentially you'll see something like this. I pull this up, and now I have a thing that says, "Hey, guess the number between zero and 100." Okay, so let's do 50. It says, "Oh, that's too small." So maybe 75. Oh, that's too big. So it's gotta be between 50 and 75. Let's go 60. Oh, that's too big. Let's go 55. That's too big. Let's go 52. You did it. 52 is the correct answer. Correct answer. So there you have it, folks. That is um, a very simple uh, hot and cold, um, how to make a, you know, basically how to make a hot and cold uh, random number guessing game. Um, but before we leave, I really want to show you a gotcha that you need to be careful for because um, this comes up a lot, especially when getting from user input. So let's start talking about that now. Okay, so one of the biggest gotchas that you'll probably run into is dealing with user input. And the reason I say that and the reason why um, a guessing game such as this random number guesser or this hot and cold guesser is a great introductory or beginner program to actually you know get people excited about this bigot, but it also teaches programmers how users will think and may interact interact um, because what would happen so like if you remember last time when I was typing I typed 75 slash and then I caught it and I was like oh that's supposed to be a number go back right and I hit backspace and just made it you know 75 well what happens essentially if I ran this program again and I say I, let's say I guess 50 and it says hey this is too big so now let's guess and go like, well let's guess 45 um, and say I fat fingered that slash again well what happens if I actually input this and didn't catch it in backspace and I hit enter well, I get a value error. This throws an exception saying, hey, um, you can only, like int, this int function right here can only, you know, convert digits in base 10 to some number, right? It can only take the string, so the quotes of 45, and change that into the actual number of 45. It can't change anything that's a different character other than a digit. And that's what exactly happened here. And so how do we prevent this? How do we stop, you know, or make it so that our, pro our program just doesn't crash? Um, because as you see here, our program is crashed. We cannot actually go through and we can't continue to continue on. Well, that's kind of what I want to show you how we can do now is the using the try um, accept, you know, clauses in Python where you can say try. And this basically will say, hey, try this set of code and or this block of code and every if everything goes right essentially you'll try this line if it works then it'll go on to the next line it'll just keep going through this block of code until it meets the whole block and then it'll just continue on however um 
if it runs into an error, like say, like for instance, that we try to convert uh, some string into an integer and it's not doesn't contain digits, essentially what will happen is this try, this will throw an exception, which we got here, and we know that this is a value error, but if you didn't know what this was, you could essentially say, hey, just throw an exception. I'm gonna catch this exception. That's what this accept means. It says, I'm basically gonna catch this and say, I'm gonna do something here. Um, and whatever I do here, whatever I put here, I could say pass um, like that. And that'll just basically mean like do nothing, um, do nothing and just continue back through this, you know, continue on, um, which in our case, it would just continue on and go back through the loop and it'll just go on from there. However, in our case, we probably wanna do something or we would probably wanna give the user some information. Um, and something like that would be, we would print out and say, error, uh, please provide a number, not, any you know characters and then we can just say user input just in case i always like to say user input equals none um and that'll guarantee that like it doesn't get some weird value here um but it'll just and we know that it's we're not setting it to zero because what if zero is the answer we don't want that um so we'll just say hey that equals none and go on from there now if i run this and I actually say, hey, we're gonna do 45. Oh, I accidentally fat fingered that again. Boom, it says error, please provide a number, not any characters. Now let's go 45, that's too big. Let's go 30, let's go this weird string. Oh, we got another error and let's go 10. 10's too small, uh, 20, that's too big, 15. There it was, 15 was the right answer. So you can see how adding that try block and um, putting that you know, around this int allows us to continue forward. Now, some might ask, well, why didn't you actually put it just around the, this user int because we know that's gonna fail. Well, because if this fails, we know that user input is relying on a number. And so if this is not a number and this returns something like none or something like that, or, or maybe even a string, or I don't know what it returns, if it errors out, or then we get, we're gonna run into an error down here when it tries to do some comparison. So it's like, maybe it can't compare whatever data type it gets back to a number. Um, so we just essentially wrap all that there um, together. And from that, we're able to continue and move on. So there it is, folks. That's how you make a guessing game in Python. In our case, we made a um, random number guessing or a hot and cold type of guessing game. So if you like this video, if it provided value, please hit smash that like button. Um, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And one thing that you can do to add on to this, make this kind of your own, is maybe import like some sort of variable in here that says, hey, you only get 10 guesses. And then see how you can incorporate that into um, your your break condition up here or whatnot. So that way, like if they if they fail out after ten condition or ten guesses, then they lose. Um, and if you uh, if you would like me to continue on and do something like that, let me know and I'll add on to this video. Otherwise, try that on your own. See how see what you can do to make this your own type of guessing game. And until next time, keep on programming.